Hi, welcome. In this screencast, we'll demonstrate how to build a Google Compute instance with Terraform. Terraform enables us to build infrastructure as code. This allows us to version control, share, and collaborate on the code with fellow engineers. So let's dive in. What you see on your screen is an editor that is a blank Terraform module. So the first thing we need to do is create a file called main.tf. Now we can create a Google Compute instance. And by leveraging some of my editor plugins, I can easily get some boilerplate resource block code from the Terraform documents. The resource is Google Compute Instance, and the name is default. Let's change the name to be something more descriptive, such as database. Google Compute has a variety of machine types to choose from. Right now we have N1 Standard 1. So let's see what CPU and memory that has and see if we need to upgrade. So I'm going to use the Google Compute command line and list out all the machines. However, you do want to filter on these as it will come back up with a lot of them from all the different zones. So for our zone, I'm going to use US West 1A with a name regex of standard. So our machine type, N1 Standard 1, has one CPU and 3.75 gigs of memory. Let's upgrade it a bit with N1 Standard 2 at two gigs of memory, or two gig, two CPUs and 7.5 gigs of memory. Change that here. And right now our zone is US Central 1A. And since we search for US West 1, we need to change that here also. The next item to change is tags. This maps to Google Compute Instance Network Tags. These help identify which instances are subject to certain firewall rules and network routes. So for now, we'll add a network tag of DB. Later on, we'll reference this tag in a firewall resource block. Next up is boot disk, which is a pre-configured OS image to create the instance from. At the moment, the image is Debian, but let's change this to Ubuntu. So I'm going to use the Google Compute command line and list out the images with a filter of name regex for Ubuntu. So we have four of them here. They have Ubuntu 18.04, so that is the latest. So let's change it to that. Now this image value is the project and the family together in one. So here for us, it would be Ubuntu OS Cloud slash Ubuntu 18.04 LPS. Next up is the scratch disk. We'll leave this as is because this is a type of disk that is a local SSD that's on the virtual machine host itself. And since it's ephemeral, uh, the data on disk is not saved. And I don't need to use it, but I'll leave it here. Next item is network interfaces. We'll also be leaving this the same, but I did want to explain it. The default network is referencing a network that is pre-configured on most Google Compute projects. And then we have the access config block which allows us to create a publicly accessible IP address to our server. Usually we don't want to do that for most servers, but for us, we need to SSH in for this example. You can also remove this access config block and it will not create a public IP. And since this is a Linux server, we'll need to use the metadata block to assign a SSH public key. Google Compute has an option to specify the SSH key within this block. It's called SSH keys. 
for the key name, and then for the value, it is the username and SSH public key content. So we'll use Ubuntu, and then we will need to uh, pull in file content. Um, to do that, we'll use a Terraform function called file. This reads the content of the file, path given, and puts it onto the metadata value. Since this is a um, sensitive value, we'll create a Terraform input variable. Terraform input variables are parameters for our Terraform code. To specify a variable, we use r dot and then the variable name. So in this case, let's use sh public key file path. These next few items we don't need to worry about. Um, I'll remove them for now. Since we just referenced the variable, sh public key file path, we will need to now define it with a variables block. So let's create a new file called variable.tf, then create a variables block with the name of the variable that we just created. The variable block allows us to describe what the variable is for. Is for. So in this case, this is the file path for the sh public key. We can also specify the type of variable. They have string, list, or map as options in var for variables in Terraform. So in our case, it's a file path, so it'll be a string. And a default value can be specified. And we'll put Ubuntu.pub. If the variable is not defined as a parameter when running the Terraform code, it will use this value. Since I've referenced a, a missing file, let's go over to my command line and do sh key gen Ubuntu. And now we've created an Ubuntu.pub file. From here, we need to do one last thing to create our Terraform code, which is a file called outputs.tf. Outputs in Terraform help distinguish attributes that are important to your infrastructure and code. So the output block we're going to use is going to be external IP. The value of this of the output is a reference attribute to the Google Compute Instance resource. So you type in Google Compute Instance. And since we can specify many of those blocks, we also need to reference which block we're referencing. So we named it database, so we will put database in there. And most of these reference attributes are provided by Google, the resource provider. And since we only has one network interface defined, and it's a type of map. We'll use the first in the map by specifying zero. So first we need inter network interfaces dot zero, and then we need to specify the access config, which is what creates the external IP address. This is also a map, and we need to specify zero there. And now we finally get to our reference attribute value, which is called assigned mat IP. So let's stop there with our code. It's time to run it on Google Cloud. First, we'll need to download a credentials JSON file from the Identity and Access Management Console. So let's go to console.google or console.cloud.google.com. Once here, we need to click on the menu icon, go over to I am an admin, and click on the service accounts menu option. This brings us 
to a list of accounts. We'll need to create a new service account. Let's choose a name like Terraform Google. And then we need to choose a role. For now, we'll use project owner. So I suggest using things that have discrete permissions as needed in the future. We also need to check the box next to furnish a new private key and leave it as JSON. Then let's create, click create. So you see it created the account and gave me the key and it started automatically downloading for me. So now I can begin using those credentials for my Terraform code. So back in the editor, Let's move the credentials file over to this folder. I believe it went into my downloads. And I can put credentials.json. I have a credentials.json file. And now we need to reference that credentials file. There are a couple ways to do that with Terraform. For us, we'll use a shell environment variable. And I've pre created the environment variable. Let me explain that to you now. I have a Google application credentials, and it's referencing credentials.json. I have a G Cloud project, which is using the JQ utility to give it the project's ID from the credentials file. And then I have also the G Cloud region which is the region we want to stand the infrastructure up in. Once that's all done, then we can begin running Terraform. So I'm going to open up my command line a little bit more here. I'm going to source the .env. I'm going to run the command Terraform init. This pulls in the Google provider plugin and any other external plugins into the Terraform directory or sorry into the dot Terraform directory. What it's doing is pulling down the plugins from releases.hashicorp.com, downloading the Google provider plugin, and then specifying what version it used and that it's been successfully initialized. Next command we can run is Terraform plant. This interacts with the Google Cloud and refreshes the Terraform state and outputs changes that Terraform will perform on your Google Cloud. So we have the output. And so what we have here is a Plus with green is a create action. And Terraform is saying this is the following actions that will perform. So plus with green is a create action. And we have a Google Compute Instance database. And then it provides all the different items that it's going to list out or create. Some of them are computed and some we've specified ourselves. You'll see we have the metadata.sh keys and the Ubuntu and the file resource pulled in the Ubuntu .pub file. Then we also have the network interface. As you see, here's a .0 that we were referencing for the output variable. And then we have the access config, and then we have the assign that IP. And you'll see we have the zone. So this is a quick way of seeing if what you're thinking is going to come out the way the way you wrote it in the code. And you'll see at the end it says plan one, add, zero to change, and zero to destroy. So at this point, the last thing we need to run is Terraform apply. This does the changes that Terraform plan told us about, and it will make it happen on Google Cloud. So let's run that. So now it's saying, do you want to perform these changes? A yes is accepted to keep going. Anything else, it will just stop.
So it's outputting more details about what it's doing. It's saying it's still creating this Google Compute instance called database. And only 10 seconds have elapsed. But once this finalizes, we will see a couple new files. We'll see a terraform.tf state and a terraform.tf state backup. Um, and you'll see that we have the dot terraform folder here with the plugins. We'll see how we have the terraform.tf state. These files hold the information about the infrastructure Terraform is managing, and it maps real world resources to your configuration. So you can see on the output, we have apply is complete. It's green. One resource was added. Zero change and zero destroy. And here's the output that we wanted. So now I'm able to easily grab what the external IP is and be able to SSH in. So if I do SSHN Ubuntu at the IP address and then specify the Ubuntu uh, private key, I'm in. Congratulations. We now have a Google Cloud instance we can log into.